Let's talk about Pakistan. One cartoon has destabilized a country of 220 million people. Islamist radicals have taken law and order hostage. And the Prime Minister, who once asked his citizens to unite against France, is now having a tough time explaining why he cannot send the French ambassador back. I'll start with the latest. The civil war, which began almost a week back, is far from being over. On one hand, our supporters of Tehreek e Labek a radical outfit. On the other are Pakistan security forces and they're clashing endlessly. There's violence in almost every city. Islamabad, Lahore, Karachi, Rawalpindi, Multan, Peshawar, Gujranwala, Faisalabad, you name it, every city in Pakistan is grappling with unrest. What do these protesters want? Well, four things basically. One, release their leader, Saad Hussain Rizvi. Two, lift the ban on their group, Tehreek e Labek. Three, quash all cases against the TLP's members, release all the arrested protesters. And four, expel the French ambassador to Pakistan, Mark Beretti. Have these demands been met? Yes and no. So far, Islamabad has only agreed to release some of those arrested for disrupting law and order. The ban on Tehreek e Labek stays and its leader, Saad Hussein Rizvi, is not being released so far. As for the fourth demand, Imran Khan says expelling the French ambassador will not change a thing. He's right for a change. It won't. Besides, of course, ruining Islamabad's already rocky ties with European nations and maybe triggering some sanctions. Listen to this. My question is that if France's ambassador to France and to give all the relations to them, will this stop from that? Will this stop from that? Will there be any guarantee from that? ان کی شان میں کوئی گستاخی نہیں کرے گا کوئی گارنٹی ہے جب ہم فرانس کے امبیسڈر کو واپس بھیج کے تعلقات توڑیں گے ان سے اس کا مطلب کہ یورپین یونین سے ہم تعلقات توڑیں گے اس کا مطلب کیا کہ جو ہماری آدھی ٹیکسٹائل کی ایکسپورٹس ہیں وہ یورپین یونین میں جاتی ہیں تو اس کا مطلب آدھی ہماری ٹیکسٹائل ایکسپورٹس وہیں ختم ہو گئی اس کا مطلب بے روزگاری فیکٹریاں بند ہو جائیں گی There is, there's a reason why we call him the U-turn Prime Minister. Let me take you back to October 2020. When Charlie Hebdo republished Prophet Muhammad's caricatures, Imran Khan went all out to project himself as the custodian of Islamic faith. He put out sanctimonious tweets preaching Emmanuel Macron on what the hallmarks of a true leader are. He also milked anti-France sentiments in his country, gave a free run to protesters in Pakistan. Rallies were held across Pakistan calling for the death of Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, and the boycott of French products. The Imran Khan government led all of this from the front. And now when the chickens have come home to roost, the same prime minister is preaching tolerance. And to save face, the Pakistan government has introduced a resolution on the expulsion of the French ambassador. It has been tabled in Pakistan's National Assembly. The debate has begun, but not how the PTI wanted it to. The opposition is going all guns blazing, exposing Imran Khan's hypocrisy. France में गुस्ताखी हुई है, उसके ऊपर हमने यहाँ पर बहस करनी है। तो जनाब स्पीकर मैं उम्मीद रखता था कि पाकिस्तान के अंदर किसी पार्लियामेंटेरियन के लिए, किसी मुसलमान के लिए اس سے اہم کوئی مسئلہ نہیں ہو سکتا جہاں ہمارے نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی ذات مبارک کے اوپر کوئی بات ہونی ہو تو مجھے توقع تھی کہ وزیراعظم اپنی کرسی پہ بیٹھے ہوتے اور آج یہ قرارداد وزیراعظم کو پیش کرنی چاہیے تھی That's not the end of our Pakistan story Imran Khan also has some advice for western nations and he has asked them to criminalize blasphemy against Islam. He says that insulting Prophet Muhammad should be treated the same way as the denial of Holocaust. Says the leader of a country that uses faith to justify terrorism. If hypocrisy had a face, it would be this one. But on a more nuanced note, nobody likes their religion to be disrespected. Nobody would want to see a caricature of their prophet. And we understand that. But why is it that none of the other Islamic countries are protesting the way Pakistan is? Why is it that Pakistan is making the most noise? Is the belief of Pakistanis in Islam stronger than the rest of the Islamic countries? Than the likes of, say, Saudi Arabia or Iran?
This is a controversial question, but it must be answered. You see, the protests in Pakistan are as much religious as they are political. The Tehreek e Labek has a history of being backed by the Pakistan army and the ISI. It was brought into the mainstream as a tool of political engineering and to launch Imran Khan to power. And now, the very same party has gone rogue. Speaking against the Imran Khan government, it has turned blasphemy into a political weapon and won the support of the general public in Pakistan. Imagine if this party comes to power in the future, and it's quite possible in Pakistan. The implications would be severe for South Asia and the rest of the world. All I'm saying is that these protests are no longer an internal matter of Pakistan. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.